Hello, everyone, and welcome to week 10 of MSK case series. This is a great case uh, that I would love to show. Here, what we're seeing here is a fluoroscopic injection. So we've brought the patient to under x-ray guidance and we're injecting contrast into the wrist joint, the radiocarpal joint. And the way we do that is we use a dorsal approach and we put our needle right here onto the scaphoid bone. Okay, this is one of the carpal bones in the wrist. This is the scaphoid bone right here. This is the lunate. This here is a triquetrum. This circular bone is the pisiform. And then you have the trapezium, the trapezoid, the capitate, and then the hamate here. And this is the hook of the hamate. These are the five metacarpal bones. And of course we have the radius and the ulna here. We put our needle here along the scaphoid. We do a dorsal approach. So not the polymer approach, but the dorsal approach. And we, uh, once we're on the bone, we inject contrast and contrast should be flowing in the radiocarpal joint right here. Okay. So we've done, we've done a fluoroscopic injection uh, as part of a wrist arthrogram. And the question that I have for all of you guys is what's the most likely diagnosis that we see here? Is this a, an example of a TFCC tear, a triangular fibrocartilaginous complex tear, a scapholunate ligament tear, a lunatotriquetral ligament tear, or a flexor tendon tear. If you take a look here, so the key to all arthrogram uh, cases is understanding where contrast should be and where contrast has gone in an area where it shouldn't be. So right off the bat, we notice that there's some contrast outlining some of these tendons here. Now, this is iatrogenic. Oftentimes, when you do a dorsal injection, you're going to outline a lot of the extensor tendons, and that's what we're seeing here. And I want you to avoid that because this, if any of you have done wrist arthrograms, this is very common. You, you see contrast outlining some of the extensor tendons, and I want you to avoid that. But what we should see is we should only see contrast in the proximal carpal row or the radiocarpal joint. But what we see instead is much contrast in the midcarpal row. So the space between the scaphoid, lunate, triclutra, and pisiform, and the trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, hamate. That's the mid-carpal row. The proximal carpal row is right here between the radius and the proximal carpal bones, like the scaphoid, lunate, and triquetra. Okay, so we should only have contrast here, but we unfortunately have contrast here in the mid-carpal row. So the only way contrast can go from the proximal carpal row to the mid-carpal row is one of two ways. There has to be a hole or a perforation in either the scaphoid ligament or the lunatotriquetral ligament, because that's the only way contrast is going to be able to get from the proximal carpal row to the mid-carpal row. So if there was a tear, for example, in the scaphoid ligament, because that's the barrier, right? The scaphoid ligament, which runs right here between the scaphoid and the lunate, is a barrier between the proximal carpal row and the mid-carpal row. The lunatotriquetral ligament is a barrier between the proximal carpal row and the mid-carpal row. So if there's a tear in one of these two ligaments, you will get fluid or contrast extravasation into the mid-carpal row. And in fact, we can actually see contrast here outlining the lunar triclutral ligament. And we can see the contrast going from the uh, proximal carpal row to the mid-carpal row through the lunar triclutral ligament, which is a space between the lunar triclutral. So this is none other than a lunar triclutral or lunar triclutral ligament tear. How do we see in contrast going from this, you know, in the scaphoid lunate interval between the scaphoid and the lunate from here to the mid-carpal row? Then that would be a scaphoid lunate ligament tear, okay? Um, a TFCC tear, which is a, you know, the triangular fibrocartilaginous structure, right, is a fibrocartilaginous structure that, you know, runs here between the radius and the ulna. What we would expect to see is we would see contrast extravasating into the distal radial ulnar joint. So you would see contrast kind of pooling right here in the distal radial ulnar joint. That would indicate that there's a tear or perforation in the TFCC. So we don't see contrast extravasating into the, into the distal radial ulnar joint. So thus we can infer that the TFCC is actually intact. So this is a nice case of what a lunotriquetral ligament tear would look like, okay? Um, and we can see it very nicely, the contrast outline here in the lunotriquetral space. Now the scaphoid and lunotriquetral ligaments are very important ligaments. They're intrinsic ligaments of the wrist. Intrinsic means that they're connecting carpal bone to carpal bone, scaphoid to lunate and lunate to triquetrum, right? So these are very important for stability. The extrinsic ligaments that, you know, for, that connect radius and ulna to the carpal bones or carpal bones to metacarpals aren't as important for stability. Um, so we make a big deal about assessing the integrity of the scaphoid and lunotriquetral ligaments. Now, lunotriquetral ligaments aren't as common as scaphoid tears, but they typically happen in like weightlifters, gymnasts, typically patients falling on a dorsiflexed uh, wrist with their forearm force and pronation. That's the mechanism of injury, okay? And the lunotriquetral ligament is a uh, 
It's thickest along its volar aspect. The volar aspect is usually trapezoidal in shape. We see that on the MRI. The central portion is usually triangular in shape. And then the dorsal aspect is, you know, kind of band-like. But, you know, when you tear the volar aspect of it, that's, you know, that's more important for stability and that can, and that, and that can be a problem. So, you know, this is a nice example of what a, you know, lunotracutial ligament tear looks like. And what I love about wrist arthrogram is you can often make the diagnosis on the fluoroscopic images themselves, right? We can't really, if we did like a shoulder arthrogram to evaluate for a label tear, we almost never see the label tear on the fluoroscopic studies. We need to, we rely on the MRI images. Same thing in the hip. You know, for a hip label tear, we almost always rely on the hip MR studies to evaluate and see the tear in the labor. But on a wrist fluoroscopic exam, we can often see the imaging abnormality and the, you know, the tear on the fluoroscopic images, as we do in this case, we can see frank contrast going through the lunotraquitral interval, suggesting a lunotraquitral tear. Hope this was helpful and beneficial. Thank you so much. Tune in next week for another great high yield MSK case. Thank you so much for your attention.